The new craze that's sweeping the city is the edible garden, a delicious mix of beauty and the feast. Take the small garden in Greenwich. It's only 45 foot long by 15 foot wide, but it's a perfect example of how combining flowers and vegetables can make the most of an average London plot. Alex Mitchell is the proud gardener who's made an art out of growing her greens. Alex, why do you think it's become so popular to grow vegetables in gardens these days? I think everyone is more interested these days in, in food and where it comes from. And we're more and more suspicious of supermarkets, I think, in the whole food mile thing. Um, growing your own food, I suppose, is just a really instant way to get results from your own garden. And it just tastes really nice as well, so it's really satisfying. I love the way that you've mixed vegetables with ornamental plants as well, because at first sight you wouldn't <coughs> think that this is just a vegetable garden because there's so much more. Well, that was what I wanted to do. That was my kind of challenge, really, because I wanted to create, to grow food, but I didn't want to have an allotment. I didn't want to come out the back door and think, you know, rows of cabbages or whatever. And is it more or less 50-50 with plants and edibles? I would say, yeah, most beds mix half and half. Um, and sometimes even if you look at a bed, you might think that just is a green plant. It's actually usually a herb. Obviously, that's mint. And then, obviously, the big daisy plants there, which just lift the bed, really, because otherwise it can look a bit green. So show us what you've got, then. What can, what can we eat now? Right, OK, well, now there's raspberries are out. The raspberries have gone mental this year because of the, the rain, I think. Can I have one? Of course. Help yourself. Sorry. Very good, much better than shop board, that's for <laughs> sure. Yeah, they, they're lovely because you can eat them really, really ripe. And sometimes I pick them and I think if that was in a punnet, even for half an hour, it would be all squashy, mm. you know, but they're just so, they melt in the mouth. A good flower and vegetable garden uses every inch of space. This trellis also supports butternut squash, a grapevine, a purple clematis, and some runner beans. So here are the tomatoes, which I've planted in grow bags, just because I'm lazy and because grow bags are so easy. And you've hidden them with all I've gravel? I've hidden them with gravel, yes. Mm. It means that you can have the ease of the grow bag without the ugliness. The ugliness, because grow bags are pretty ugly, really, aren't they? Um, yeah, so I've got some sun gold, which are these orange ones, which are just absolutely lovely. Can I have one? Yeah, but they've sort of split some of them because of all the rain, so you all might right. want one which hasn't split. And they're really sweet. That's I have to stop my two-year-old eating these because he just literally <laughs> will eat all of the green ones as well. Now, it strikes me there's lots of do's and don'ts with vegetable gardening. Is, is there anything yeah. that you do or don't do? Lots of rules, aren't there? Um, I break most of them um, because of the space constraints, generally. And do you go for this idea of companion planting, planting one thing as it improves maybe the flavour of another thing or keeps pests away? Yeah, again, when I remember, I do, but I tend to plant a lot of nasturtiums because they, they look nice and they do bring in insects and bee, bees and things. Um, and uh, obviously the cosmos as well do bring in insects, all of which helps pollinating. So it sounds to me like the, the message is just plant what you like and hope I for just, the best. I just always hope for the best and put it in. What's the worst that can happen? It'll die. And you'll just think, well, OK, I didn't have any beans this year. It's not the end of the world. Alex's garden has something to harvest all year round. So just because summer's over, don't think you're off the hook. Here's my guide to autumn planting. This is the perfect time of year to be planting what every kitchen needs, onions and garlic. And underneath this flower, you've got these fantastic garlic bulbs. So next year, you'll be pulling these out of the ground. Kale and broccoli can go in now too, and also hardier varieties of salad leaves. But you can cheat a bit, and it's very easy. Instead of growing things from seed, go down the garden centre, and you can buy young plants like this. It's much easier. November's the dormant season when most things stop growing for the winter, but it's the perfect time to be planting bare root plants, fruit trees, bush fruit and cane fruit like these raspberries. Basically all you'll be buying is a bunch of sticks with some roots on the end, planted in the ground and you'll see some proper action next spring. You can even harvest new potatoes through the winter if you plant them now, but you've got to be careful because they're not frost hardy and you can end up with a load of black mush. The trick is to protect them with a good thick mulch or even a blanket laid on the ground. And don't forget the flowers. This is a good time to take pentstemon and geranium cuttings, which can stay in the greenhouse or on a windowsill over winter. 
It may not mean that you never have to visit the supermarket again, but combining ornamentals and edibles is a great step on the road to self-sufficiency. And it's a really satisfying way of making the most of your small London garden. That's your lot for this week's Homes and Property, but join us again next time for some more adventures in London's property playground.